Chairman Pope, ladies and gentlemen of this ad hoc committee, I'm E. Ray Moore, um, retired Army Reserve Chaplain in the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, and I uh, continue to be active in pastoral ministry, um, not fully retired, and I'm opposed uh, to the Convention of the States. Your former House Judiciary Chairman, Greg Delaney, now retired, was in opposition to this. Um, he, I think, ran the committee in a fair, uh, even-handed way, but I think if you knew him well, you could talk to him, he would tell you he was in opposition. He's gone. Now you must step up and show some of the same loyalty to our founding and governing document that he did. We must all become constitutional men and women and not give into fadism and cosmetic approaches to this current crisis. I want to use my remaining time to address the, uh, not the balanced budget amendment, but the uh, term limits. It's not one of the two bills, but it is on the, uh, in the House, and it was up last year. So I am uh, going to speak uh, asking you to vote no on 3166, which I think is still an active bill, and also oppose uh, Article 5 convention, including H3125 and 3017. These have been specifically addressed today. Even the convention of the state uh, people implicitly acknowledge the danger of such a convention when they ask state legislators to pass faithful delegate laws, which they claim will control delegates to confine themselves to the particular issue at hand, such as term limits. Uh, Congress controls the delegate process, not the states. Delegates would not be under state control since an Article V convention is not a state function, but a federal convention. Now the idea of term limits seems like a great idea. It's probably the most popular of the different uh, ones moving around, but it's not a wise idea in itself. We already have in place a term limits program, and it's called an election. We can change the U.S. House every two years and the U.S. Senate every six years. If officials get reelected year after year, don't you think it's okay to assume that the voters wanted them? South Carolina in particular has benefited from a no term limit system or what we call the seniority system. We are a small state and yet have, political, have had political power and influence well beyond our smallness over the decades. For example, Senator Strom Thurmond and Fritz Holland served together for 36 years in the U.S. Senate giving South Carolina a powerful duo. One senator in each party so that we had across the board power no matter who controlled the White House. Further, they chaired, or Senator Thurman, the uh, Senate Armed Services Committee, and uh, all through the 90s. And uh, due to his seniority status, he was able to co author influential, um, excuse me, Senator Hollins, due to his seniority status, was able to uh, co author the influential Graham Rudman Hollins bill to control deficit spending. He was a budget hawk. Senator Hollins was among the first to discuss bad trade deals uh, the U.S. has had over the decades. He authored other important bills in his 36 years and protected, both of them protected our military bases. If we had term limits, that would have been prevented. Today we have Senator Lindsey Graham as chairman of the Influential Judicial Judiciary Committee, one of the top two or three committees in the U.S. Senate. This position was gained by faithful service over a long period of time, and that could be restricted by term limits. H3166 is a bad idea on several fronts. We cannot guarantee that an Article V convention would be restricted to term limits or balanced budget uh, idea itself. Both of the in themselves are bad ideas and they would partic a particular penalize South Carolina and could weaken our influence in the Congress. I ask you to reject all these proposals. I've given you my statement already, and then we have a paper here by noted constitutional uh, scholars William Olson and Herb Titus, 
and they have filed about 250 amicus briefs before the U.S. Supreme Court and courts of appeal, and they address particularly that there is a danger of a runaway convention. Thank you. Colonel, I, I've been looking as we everyone's been speaking at Article 5, and, and you know, I, and I hear what people are saying. You know, Congress can do it. That was what I was asking the last gentleman, or, or the states can apply. And then again, from what I've read, it looks like we're asking Congress to call it, and then con Congress takes over from yeah. there. I guess my question is, the Founding Fathers put this in. What circumstances do you envision where the states ever would use it? Because I get all the fears, but I'm just trying to understand. Well, I, I if they think, put uh, it in there, would we ever? Is yeah, it I think it was. Uh, even discussed at the time, and there are some things in the Federalist Papers, I, I can't be real specific, that they were cautious about it even when they did it. But um, I think right now the culture, the legal, political, social, moral culture is so depraved and so has sunk so low that we couldn't guarantee the quality of people that we need. <clears throat> I've had people talk to me who are on, in favor of the Convention of the States, and <clears throat> one was a state leader, this is a few years ago, and he said, um, I said, you can't guarantee the delegates. See, we would probably select our delegates from South Carolina. And I said, you can't guarantee that we'll have constitutional thinking people that would be the delegates. And this is his answer. And I'm not going to name him. He's an honorable man. He said, well, we know here and with the South Carolina Convention of the States, people, his, the leadership group in the state, we know we would not get the delegates we want from California, Illinois, and New York. But we would get conservative or constitutional thinking people from the red states. I said, I'll call him Bill. What, his name is not Bill. I said, you, you're naive. I said, we wouldn't get constitutional thinking delegates from the state of South Carolina. So this has got tremendous danger. And I, I agree with what others have said on that. And, and we've had others to discuss the remedies. There are remedies for these problems within the body of the Constitution itself. This is reckless. It'll be putting a revolver to our head, playing Russian roulette with our Constitution. And I just, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very uh, agree with a lot of the complaints that these people have made. I, have, I share the sentiment, but this is not the solution. Thank you, sir. I certainly appreciate your Thank time. You.